I know you love Techers. I'm just going to start from the goal, right? Then we discuss the game and yeah. everything. And it's nail-nail. It's a fourth minute of injury time. Galeno, who I got missed, had this incredible sequence in the first half where he hit the post and somehow missed the rebound, which the more you look at it, it's probably more difficult than it oh, appears. The rebound for sure, yeah. Uh, but then he whips out this incredible shot from... Yeah, a lovely shot for the only goal of the game, of course. Martinelli should have never lost the ball and give the ball away like he did. I think that David Raya is far too advanced of his line Thank too. you. Uh, Thank you. But take nothing away from the curve and the way that Galeno hit the ball. I think that was a that was a savable shot, though, to be honest. To for be, a good goalkeeper, for a very good goalkeeper. Well, yes, a, for a guy uh, who's so, maybe just a good goalkeeper. Yeah, certainly not a keeper yeah. that is so advanced off his line, for sure. But take nothing away from Porto because they had a game plan that worked really, really well. The frustrated Arsenal, they take away every all rhythm and tempo in the game, which then makes life difficult for Arsenal to produce anything. And Porto played and almost forced Arsenal to play their game, the Porto game, not the Arsenal game. And it worked really well. So they deserve their win. Well done to them. Sergio Conceição said before the game, Arsenal have a lot of quality, but we've got quality too. And they haven't played a team like us before in this competition this year. Yeah. Which... I, I thought, you know, again, I don't want to be one of those guys who goes on about sort of defensive masterclasses and the importance of tactics and whatever. But Porto, I thought they denied Arsenal. They made Arsenal look like they had zero ideas. And yeah. I think some of that is actually on Arteta. I was in two minds about this. I, had, I debated this with a, with a good friend who's an Arsenal fan. And he was saying things like, well, why not change it up earlier, right? First change, minute 74, Jorginho comes on. Only change, right? Right, it's the only change in the game. And I said, logically, yeah, you can tell. Your lineup's not working, right? You're not creating anything, yeah. change it up. But then I remembered, this is the first half of a 180-minute game. And maybe that's what, even though it seems to me it's counter to Arteta's nature, Maybe that's a little bit what he was thinking. Maybe I'm giving Arteta the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe he's saying, you know what? So what? If it's a drab nil-nil draw, draw exactly. whatever. Yeah, I think he would have been we'll happy with We'll stuff them. Doesn't matter. We don't score the away goals. There's no away goal rule anymore. Yeah. Let's yeah go. Is that what he was thinking? Yeah, 100%. I, I know it's not a good game from his team. It's not a good game in general. There's 36 fouls in that game. The, the ball in play was 15 minutes. 5-0 out of 94 effective minutes in the game. Only 50 of those 94, the ball was actually in play. It's just not, it was just not working for Arsenal. You take the nil nil draw, and that's why I think he arted. I can be frustrated with Martinelli and the, the, the terrible pass that he tries before the Galeno goal, even if then there's a long way for Galeno to score. Still, that's not a pass that you should do. And maybe the lack of experience from this Arsenal team in the Champions League, I mean, because, okay, Zinchenko and Gabriel were not there. Kai Havertz had played in Champions League before and even won it and scored in the final. But Pep had more Champions League appearances by far than all of the starting 11 from Arsenal combined. And I think at some point, maybe that also played because to deal with the frustration, to not make mistakes like Martinelli did or Raya did even, I think experience is, is quite important. Okay, yes, Pep, because he's very old, he's got more, and he played for Real Madrid, he's got more appearances. But let's be very clear on this. Uh, and I say this to, to praise Porto. Both teams are third in their respective leagues, but of course one plays in the Premier League yeah. and is at the time, well, but until Liverpool, you know, if you exclude Liverpool's game in hand or extra game, they were two points off the top yeah. and they've got an enormous budget and they spent huge over the summer. <laughs> Porto are a team that have sole players. They're a team that's not having a great season. They're third yeah. in, in Portugal. I think they're seven or eight points uh, off the top. Uh, they had big, Absentees, big injuries. Evan Nielsen's, I know he scored, he scored the, what, like three goals in one game in the group stage or whatever, yeah. but you know, certainly with Taremi, it's a different story. He had fewer options. He had to chuck Otavio in there. Um, they find players and they get the players to execute. And I love seeing this happen because these are guys who come in, do a job and execute and show that the gap isn't the same gap. It's not like the guy at Arsenal who makes 10 times what the guy at Porto makes. He's not 10 times better. And yeah, what's, what's your, what's your I love that. I yeah, love that reminder. Good. I love the idea. Team. They're a good team. Still, it's not because they're, they're a good not team. They're a great... third. They're third. It they're way matter. back. They're out of the title race. It doesn't matter. It's not because you're not good in your league that you're not a good team. It can happen. They've been poor against smaller teams this season. When it's down to good teams, they've been actually decent. They were good in the group stages too. Yeah, I, I, I still want to 
praise the underdog yeah. side no, of no, it. No, no, but they deserve and, their win completely. And, and, and I agree with you. Yeah, of course. No, they, do, know, they, they deserve it. it.